Okay, so in this video we want to look at solving second order linear homogeneous uh, differential equations. So these are given uh, in the following form, which is y double prime plus a function of x times y prime plus q of x. Again, no dependence on y times y equals zero. So these are linear, which let's just remind ourselves that means that the highest uh, power of y in this is 1 so that's this term there's no y in here these are derivatives of y and that means that uh, the solutions of the ODE form a vector space So what can you do in a vector space? You can take linear combinations, meaning that if you have uh, one solution of this vector, uh, one solution of this equation, let's say that solution is given by u1, and I've got another one u2, then let's say a u1, which is just a scaling of u1, plus b u2, which is a scaling of u2. This is also a solution. So that's exactly what I was saying here. And that will be that will be important later. Now given the structure of this equation, since there are no y's appearing, a good conjecture for what the solution, the form of the solution should actually be, is uh, some multiple of the exponential function. Because we're only getting uh, functions of x out and there's no y dependence. So that's the key strategy that we're going to use in solving these equations. So let's have a look. So we have y double prime plus y prime minus 6y is 0. So what we're going to do, as I said before, is set y to be e to the lambda x. If we do this, what we find is that the derivative is lambda e to the lambda x and the second derivative is lambda squared, e to the lambda x. Now if I insert these into the given equation, I get lambda squared plus uh, lambda minus 6 is equal to 0. Of course there's an e to the lambda x coming out the front. The reason why I didn't write the e to the lambda x originally is because after you solve these a bunch of times you realize there's no point, you can just go from here to here because the exponential is positive. So this automatically gives you lambda squared minus six is equal to zero. In particular, if we factorize this, just to make sure I'm not making a silly error. So lambda minus three, lambda minus two. Yeah, so I get uh, lambda minus three, lambda, lambda plus three minus two. Yeah, so lambda is two or lambda is minus three. Okay, what do you deduce from this? Well, I assume the solution was of the form this, so I have now two solutions, which are e to the 2x and e to the minus 3x. Now, I have two solutions. I can take linear combinations, and that will give me all the solutions. So I take b and a to be real numbers. Now, the reason why I know I get all the solutions is because the order meaning the highest number of uh, derivatives occurring in the equation is 2, and I have two independent solutions, e to the 2x and e to the minus 3x. So I know that all solutions of this ODE have to be of this form. Another thing to observe is that I got two real roots out of this equation, and that this equation is sometimes referred to as the characteristic equation. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So here I got solve the following second order ODE, which is 4y double prime plus 12y prime plus 9y is equal to 0. So again, we'll conjecture that the solution is of the form e to the lambda x. Following the computation I did before, we'll end up with 4 lambda squared plus 12 lambda plus 9 is equal to 0. Now, 
just to be safe, let's use the quadratic formula. So I'll get negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 uh, times 4 times 9, all divided by 2 times 4. Now what does this give us? This gives us minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 16 times 9, all divided by 8. Now we have minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 144. Now 16 times 9 is 160 take 6, which is 54 take uh, 10, which is 144, so this is also 144, divided by 8, and I get minus 12 over 8, which is, I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 4, in which case I get minus 3 over 2. Now, what we do here is I've got e to the minus 3 on 2x is my solution, but the order of the ODE is 2, so I need to produce a second solution which is also uh, in, which is independent to this. So the second one will be given by x e to the minus 3 on 2x. And this is because the root here occurs with multiplicity 2. And in a future video, I'll go through a whole argument on the proof of why the, the x appears here. So now we find that the general solution is given by a, a linear combination of these. So we can find constants a and b such that the solutions are all of the form a times e to the minus 3 on 2x plus bx e to the minus 3 on 2x. So this is the case when the characteristic polynomial has uh, one root of multiplicity 2. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Solve the following second order ODE. So again, we get lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 13 is 0. Quadratic formula tells me that lambda is 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 13 over 2 times 1. This is 6 square root of 36 minus, uh, so we have 2 times 26, which is 52 over 2, which will give me 6 plus or minus the square root of, well, that should be 12. If I, yeah, if I add um, 52, 36, 52 is 12. If I add 6, 16. Okay, so what we end up with here is 6 plus or minus the square root of 16 over 2, which are well, negative 16. So I get 6 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is 3 plus or minus 2i. Now in this case, what we find is that the solutions are given by y is e to the 3 plus 2i and y is e to the 3 minus 2i. Now I could write this, now the general solution as follows. So I could have an e cubed coming out. Uh, let's write it properly. So I got e to the 3 plus 2i plus b e to the 3 minus 2i. And what I could do further is pull out an e cubed. So I'd have a e to the 2i plus b e to the minus 2i. Now e to the 
2i using Euler's identity can be written as cosine of 2 plus ai sine of 2 and then e to the minus 2i is b cosine of minus 2 plus b i of sine of minus 2. Now because cosine is even this will give me e cubed a plus b cosine of 2 and since sine is odd I'll get e cubed a minus b i sine of 2. So if the characteristic polynomial has two complex roots uh, we have quite a bit of work to do. We have to use Euler's formula or Euler's identity to reduce to cosines and sines. We will get a complex solution and if we have one root of the characteristic polynomial, we need to introduce this x term. The easiest case, of course, is when we have two distinct real roots, and then we just do the obvious thing. We just take linear combinations. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. There should be notes in the video description down below, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section down below.